Mario and throw them over on that part. Yeah. been having quite a problem with the turkeys. Instead of roosting in their barn at night, they've decided to start roosting in the trees. Actually, they haven't just suddenly decided this. They've been doing it on and off since they've been old enough to fly. We clip one wing on each turkey, but they grow back so fast that it's like every two weeks. So we started by moving everything far away from these trees so that we thought they were like jumping up on things and then being able to jump into the trees or at least get on the roof and then into the trees. That didn't work. So I cut a bunch of the low branches thinking that that would work. They can still fly up. So today I'm cutting even more branches. I'm going to go up pretty darn high and if that still doesn't work, I think our only answer is going to be eventually to cut down these two trees. They're black walnut trees, which we really don't like having around anyway. Uh, but we did like the little bit of shade that it provides back here for them in the summer. So I'm going to grab my saw and see if we can cut a few more branches. And then tonight, when they go into roost, we'll clip some more wings. Now not very often that I have a use for a pole saw so I just have this cheap electric one that I picked up at Harbor Freight probably 10 years ago to be honest it's been up in the rafters of the garage ever since we moved here from Arizona this is the first time I've had to use it since we lived here so hopefully it still works good enough to just cut a few branches Well, this blade is pretty dull. <sighs> All right, I think that tree is done. If they can still get up in that after that, that tree just needs to come down. I'm gonna take one more branch off this other tree. We'll call it a day for this project, other than picking up the limbs. All right, that's as much as I'm trimming those trees. So we'll, we'll clip the wings on the turkeys again tonight once they go into roost. And if that doesn't solve the problem, drastic measures are gonna be called for. Now that we have that project done outside, there are a couple things that I need to get done today. We just talked with you guys the other day about us processing our two pigs for the year and I didn't mention anything about the fat that we collected and the lard that we're going to render from those pigs. So Kevin and I are going to work on getting this fat into this giant crock pot, my Nesco roaster, and have it cooked down and rendered into lard. Last year our pigs were really fat and I got a ton of lard off of them. These guys this year were really lean and so I'm a little sad with the lack of fat that we got from them, but I'm gonna take advantage of what we have, cut up the pieces of fat and put them in here and render it down. When you raise the pigs back in the woods like we do and you give them a lot of area to run and be free, uh, one of the downsides to that is that you end up with leaner pigs uh, because they can exercise uh, they just end up with less fat on them. When you raise them in confinement like they do in the you know big industrial uh, places then you end up with fatter pigs but we'd much rather give them a better life and end up with a little less fat for lard. I think also the breed has something to do with it because last year we raised them in the woods too but we got a lot more fat than True. this year. Yeah breed definitely plays a role. Yeah. So last year I did a really in-depth video about how to render the lard off of your pig 
And so I'm not going to go through every single step with you today. If you're interested in learning more about it, you can uh, check out that video and we'll leave a link here. But today all we're doing is cutting the fat into smaller pieces, taking off any big pieces of uh, meat or flesh that's in there. Um, and then we'll add just a teeny tiny bit of water, which will eventually steam out, but initially it will keep it from burning um, on the bottom of the uh, pot here. And then we'll scoop out and skim out uh, the fat so that there's nothing, no impurities in there. Store it in mason jars in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it. The lard in the refrigerator can really be stored indefinitely as long as it's kept cool. Some people choose to keep their lard in the jars um, either on the counter or in a cupboard. I prefer to keep mine in the refrigerator. I'm just not sure of how shelf stable this is. Uh, I don't want to take any risks so I choose to keep our lard in the refrigerator. This type of fat that we're working with right now is fat from the back of the pig, which is different than leaf lard. Leaf lard fat comes from just underneath the ribs and around the kidneys. And the difference is the back fat will taste more like pork and the leaf lard and the, the internal fat will be a lot less flavored. And that is the lard that many women will use to make pie crust, sweet pie crust. Um, this lard would be okay for pie crust if you were making like a pot pie or some kind of savory pie that it didn't matter if it tasted like pork, but nobody wants a pork flavored lemon meringue pie. I don't anyway. Bacon pie doesn't sound too bad though. Bacon pie. And we're just cutting these into smaller pieces. But if you, uh, but many people will put this through a meat grinder and, um, you know, really get it into teeny tiny bits. And that works really well. I just don't have the time or the patience for that at the moment. crock pot I'm gonna add just one cup of water like I said before this will evaporate but the water right now will keep the fat and the little meat particles from sticking to the bottom of the crock pot I'm just gonna cover it and turn it on I've had lots of questions about my Nesco and the temperatures that I do things so this I'll put on the crock pot setting which is 250 degrees and I will let that cook until the fat starts uh, separating from the tissue and then I'll use a ladle I'll strain it through a cloth or something into a jar and I'll put it in the refrigerator over here I have uh, the leaf lard which I'm gonna put back in the refrigerator I'm gonna do that in the crock pot probably another day I've got uh, one more thing I want to get done today in the kitchen before it's time to start making dinner before the kids get home I want to talk with you a little bit about a misconception that's out there about lard Lots of people think that lard is terrible for you, terrible for your body, terrible for your heart, and it's just not true when we're talking about home rendered lard from your own pigs that haven't been changed chemically by the food companies to put in the store. Now, the lard that you find in the grocery store, in the baking aisle, by the oils, by the Crisco, is a completely different type of lard than the stuff that you can render at home just from the fat off your pigs. It goes through so many changes in the chemical structures to make it shelf stable that it's no longer good for you. In fact, it's terrible for you. If you'd like more information about the difference between home rendered lard and the stuff you get from the grocery store, make sure that you look at my lard making video, my lard rendering video uh, that I referenced before. Okay, so I need to get this cleaned up so I can move on to my next project that I wanna get done before I need to start making dinner and before the kids get home from school. 
Okay, the next project I have to do is to make butter, which we love doing now because we have our own milk cow. Her name is Hope. She's a Jersey cow and gives us a ton of cream. Almost a third of every gallon that we get from her is cream. I have separated a half gallon of cream and I'm gonna make butter out of it. And uh, I love to use this blender. I think it's the easiest, best way to do this. I have a video on this that is really extensive about how to make butter, so make sure you check that out. But today I just need to get some done because Christmas cookie season is coming up and we're gonna need a lot of butter in the freezer that we can pull out and use to make Christmas cookies. Okay, it looks like the buttermilk has separated from the fat, which is the butter inside of there. So now I need to pour off the buttermilk and then I'm gonna wash the butter. Now this is not cultured um, butter or cultured buttermilk. It's just sweet butter and sweet buttermilk. That's what we like. So in order for me to use the buttermilk in my baking, I would need to add a little bit of vinegar. But I am going to save the buttermilk. Okay, set that aside. Now I'm going to add cold water. And then I'm just going to turn my blender back on and it's going to wash the remaining buttermilk out of my butter. Now the reason you do that is buttermilk, if it's left in with the butter, will make the butter go bad faster. That is mixed enough, so I'm going to drain that out now. And you'll notice that this liquid inside there is still pretty white because there's still quite a bit of buttermilk mixed in with the butter. Now I'm emptying the water at mixed with the buttermilk in something different. I can't bake with this, but that doesn't mean that the animals can't get it. This time I'm gonna scrape the sides of the blender. And wash it again. And this wash drain, wash drain, that process will happen until the water is coming out clear and not cloudy anymore. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I have washed all of this about six times and uh, it's pretty clear for that. It's still a little white, but I wanna move on. It's pretty good. Gonna pour that out. And then I'm going to scoop out all the butter and put it in this bowl. There's still quite a bit of water left in here, so I also need to get that taken care of and squeezed out. But I'll do that in this bowl when after I have the second batch that I'm gonna make. So I can do it all at once and I don't need to do all of that effort twice. There's quite a bit of water down in there. But we'll just get that taken care of. Okay, that's all taken care of. Now we can add more cream. Again, I'm gonna add four cups. Now that's only because that is what is recommended with my blender. If you're using a blender or if you, you're using your food processor, which is actually another fabulous way to make butter, um, just make sure you look at the instruction manual that will tell you the maximum amount of liquid that your device can handle for making butter um, or anything like that. Well, that was about three cups. So I'll just take what I have. We're gonna make butter again. Now that all the butter is in the bowl, I can just take a spatula or a, a spoon and press on the butter. 
and then all the water droplets that are trapped inside the little air pockets will start being squished out and then I can dump out that water into the watery buttermilk. And I'll just keep doing that until all of the water seems to be out and then I'll just put it in my little dishes that I'll put in the freezer. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna put the butter in uh, these one cup canning jars. These are wide mouth one cup canning jars that I got at Walmart and they work so well for butter. So I'm just gonna smash it down in there and get all of the air bubbles out that I can. I'm gonna switch to a spoon or something smash the air bubbles out so I can get a whole cup of butter in there. And that will be perfect and ready to go into the freezer to use for cookies or whatever. But right now I'm thinking about Christmas cookies. There. And all of that that I made today, it made three cups of butter and that is awesome. I need to clean these up, put some caps on them and put them in the freezer. Well, the kitchen projects are done for the day. The kids are home from school. It's time for me to start getting ready to make dinner. But there have been a couple things that have been on my mind lately, on my heart. So before we go, I want a chance to share a couple things with you. Uh, let's go into the living room, my comfy spot on the sofa, and let's just chat a little bit. So here I am in my comfy spot. I want to share with you guys some things that have been on my mind. Um, I, I feel like in this video I haven't been as perky and as happy and upbeat as I normally am because some things are really on my mind and I want to share a couple things with you. The first thing is, I'd like you to pray for me, please. Uh, for um, just under a month now, I've been worried about some potential medical issues that have recently come up for me. I don't have a lot of answers. I'm still undergoing testing, um, but it could be pretty serious or it could be absolutely nothing. But um, that's really weighing on my heart right now. And if you all could pray for me, I would appreciate it because I am scared. The second thing that's really been weighing on my heart is um, a situation that another homestead is going through. There's a homestead in northern Arkansas called An American Homestead. Zach and Jamie Bauer and their family are going through a really hard time right now. Jamie was diagnosed with cancer earlier in 2019 and within the last couple of weeks they shared that her cancer is now considered stage four and they are using hospice services. I'm asking for you all to pray for them. And American Homestead has a very special place in our heart because we found out about them and started following them right at the beginning of our homesteading journey. We didn't even know the term homesteading. We didn't even know what it was called that we wanted to do, but they were doing exactly what we wanted to do. So we've been following them and their family and their story uh, for years now. They are going through a really hard time right now. And if you could please keep them in your prayers, praying for comfort and some peace and maybe some joy during this really hard time of their lives. If you want to know more about what's going on, more about their story, I'd like to point you to their Patreon channel. Uh, you can find that at patreon.com slash an American homestead. It tells you about the struggles that they've been through, what's all going on with Jamie. Their YouTube channel is also called An American Homestead and they have lots of uh, their family vlog and story on there. And it would be helpful for you to watch them too. Um, they're a great family. My heart is just broken for them. And I wish them peace and comfort during this really hard time. Over the last couple of years, since we've been putting our lives 
on YouTube. You all have just shown up when we've needed you to pray and you have prayed like warriors and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So this is where we're going to end today's video. Thank you guys for stopping by our homestead today. Take care and God bless.